Astronomical telescope is our topic today. So astronomical telescopes are used uh, to see objects like uh, moon, astronomical objects like moon, stars, other planets. So this astronomical telescope consists of two lenses. First lens is, this is the first lens. This lens is towards the astronomical object. So it is called a objective lens. So first lens is objective lens. We have objective lens. And the other lens will be eyepiece, so eyepiece lens. So we have two lenses, objective lens and eyepiece lens. Objective lens is having large focal length. So the focal length is marked as F0. And eyepiece is having comparatively small focal length. Okay. So, so suppose we have a distant object here, an astronomical object. From this distant object, the light rays which are coming will be parallel to each other. And these light rays will converge at a point somewhere here okay so here we will get the image so this will be this point will be exactly the focus so this will be the focus of which lens focus of the objective lens we can mark f0 okay now here we will get the image a dash b dash this is the image produced by the objective lens the objective lens produced an image here so this is the image of the distant object distant astronomical object so that's why uh, since the object is very far away, we are uh, shown with the parallel light rays. These parallel light rays will be inclined with respect to the principal axis and make an angle alpha with respect to principal axis. So they are inclined. And now the image will be formed at a position uh, equal to that of focus, focus of the objective lens. Since they are parallel, if, this, if the light rays were parallel to principal axis, the light rays should have converged at a point focus. Since they are inclined with respect to principal axis, the light rays are focusing here, they are meeting here, this will be in the focal plane. We can say this plane will be the focal plane. So at a point on the focal plane, they will meet. So this point will be focus. Okay. Now this image A dash B dash will be at the focus of the eyepiece lens. We'll add this like that. So at the focus of the eyepiece lens, the image will be uh, A dash B dash. What will happen? Since this object, this image act as an object for the eyepiece lens. For the eyepiece lens, the object is at the focus. So it will form an enlarged image at infinity because these two light rays from the object, from the world, now this is the image. This image act as an object for the eyepiece lens. From this object, these are the light rays. One light ray parallel to principal axis, other one passing in the optic center. They are meeting at the eyes of the person. They are just directly going, going to the eye. They are not meeting anywhere here you will get the image at infinity. This is called a normal vision. So normal vision will get the image at infinity. We will get, we will see the image in an enlarged manner at an infinite distance. So this is the basic working of a astronomical telescope. Just two lenses, objective lens and eyepiece. Objective lens is having more focal length and eyepiece is having comparatively less focal length. Okay. Now we need to derive the magnification or magnifying power. Now we know that the general equation of a magnifying power, magnifying power is equal to beta by alpha. Now what is alpha? Alpha is the angle uh, subtended between uh, by the object with respect to the eye. So this is alpha, this angle also will be alpha. Since this distance is very small compared to distance between object and these two uh, and these lenses, object is very far away. Now we can say we can uh, neglect this distance. Okay, if we neglect this distance, we can see that this angle alpha will be angle made with respect to the eye. So eye is kept here. If the eye is kept here, this distance is negligible compared to the far off distance. So we can say the angle alpha will be made by principal axis between principal axis and this light ray, and it directly goes to the eye. So we can say alpha is angle made by the object to the eye with respect to the principal axis. Now this is the image. Okay, this is the first image. So this is the image. Now this angle we can treat as beta. Okay, so beta and alpha we have. Now what about the ratio beta by alpha? The ratio beta by alpha is called a magnifying power or magnification. We need to get the value of beta by alpha. Now uh, we can say what is tan beta in the figure? In the figure, we will mark this as C1 and C2. Now in the figure, in the triangle C1 A dash B dash, what is tan alpha? First we will find tan alpha. What is tan alpha? Tan alpha is equal to 
opposite side a dash b dash by adjacent side c1 a dash okay now what is tan beta from this triangle from this triangle a dash b dash c2 the tan beta is equal to again a dash b dash by c2 a dash c2 a dash now we'll substitute here tan alpha and tan beta nearly equal to alpha and beta respectively substituting here beta by alpha is equal to a dash b dash by c2 a dash that is beta divided by alpha we'll take reciprocal of this so multiply the reciprocal it will be equal to c1 a dash by a dash b dash this cancels and what you are getting will be c1 a dash by c2 a dash now what is c1 a dash this is c1 a dash it is equal to focal length of the objective lens divided by what is c2 a dash c2 a dash is the focal length of the eyepiece lens f0 by f so what is the magnifying power magnifying power is equal to f0 by f this is the magnifying power of a or of an astronomical telescope in normal adjustment when final image is formed at infinity this is the equation for magnification or we can say magnifying power so an astronomical telescope can be used to view astronomical objects means objects which are very very far away uh, like uh, planets uh, satellites all these we can view using astronomical telescope and for this the focal length of the object should be large compared to that of eyepiece not only the magnifying power will be uh, having a very large value f0 is very large f0 is very less so the magnifying power will be very large and from this angle also you can understand that this angle will be smaller angle this will be compared to a bigger angle so when you take the ratio beta by alpha the magnifying power will be very large quantity okay now alpha and beta that we have measured alpha is the angle made by the object in the eye so i have told you that assumption since the distance between the this lens system and the object is very small then this distance we can neglect okay when you neglect this distance we can say this is the angle alpha made with respect to the eye now beta is the angle made with respect to the image so this is the image so this angle is beta how are how do you find tan beta tan beta is equal to a dash b dash by c2 a dash tan alpha is equal to a dash b dash by c1 a dash then we will divide to get a magnifying power okay now what about the length of the telescope length means distance between the lenses we can say length of the telescope l is equal to f0 plus f e this will be equal to length of the telescope f0 plus f e is the length of the telescope okay now these telescopes are also known as uh, refracting type of telescopes these telescopes will suffer a few uh, drawbacks and first drawback is that since it need to collect large number of light rays if you want to see the image clearly we need large number of sufficiently large number of light rays should be gathered by the objective lens so if we need to gather more light rays its aperture size should be very very large means we, we need a, the aperture of a convex lens that is objective lens in a bigger size like this and practically it may be impossible to hold such a bigger lens and to adjust the position so that's the first uh, drawback second drawback is that the image will suffer from chromatic aberration as well as spherical aberration chromatic aberration means we and we know that these are lenses so uh, when uh, suppose we have a white object a white uh, white color light uh, light rays are coming from the distant object since the lens can be compared with the combination of many many prisms when white light enters the prism it undergoes dispersion so then after entering the lens color light rays will be colored so uh, we can see the image will be colored so we cannot see the exact color we can see a mixture of colors that is called a chromatic aberration spherical aberration means since it is a lens the light rays which are very close to the principal axis will focus at a point light rays which are very far away focus at another point i will, I will just draw the diagram to understand that suppose we have the objective lens here and i'll draw the principal axis i'm drawing two light rays one light ray and this is another light ray now this light ray since it is very close to the principal axis may be focusing somewhere here i can mark it as f1 and this light ray which is very far away it will focus very close to this but it will be at another point it is likely to happen it may be at f2 
So we have two focal points F1 and F2. So when he places a screen here, this light rays will come here and this light rays will produce it. So we cannot see the exact shape of the object. In the image, we cannot see the exact shape because they have two different focal points F1 and F2. So the uh, shape of, if it is spherical object, we will see the object slightly in extended shape. It may be slightly in oval, oval shape. That kind of aberration is called a spherical aberration. So the image is suffering from spherical aberration. Spherical aberration. Spherical aberration. Second, I have told you is chromatic aberration. What is chromatic aberration? Chromatic aberration. So chromatic aberration means the lens. Uh, we can uh, we can compare like this. If this is the shape of the lens, it is this region is equivalent to a prism. This region also having slanting uh, position. So these are equivalent to prisms. When white light, uh, this is the light rays white light when this white light come out of a prism what we have learned it will split into violet and red color okay so it will split into seven colors now uh, if you place a screen here the image we are seeing will be colored image this is called a chromatic aberration so the light ray will undergo the image will undergo chromatic aberration as well as spherical aberration that's the main drawback with the refracting type of telescopes and the third drawback which I have already explained, what is the third drawback? If we need to gather more, more and more light rays from the object, since the light rays are coming very large distance, we need to gather more light rays to get a bright image. If we need to gather more light rays, we need an objective of large aperture. So the aperture size should be very large. So we need to take a very big lens and practically it may be difficult. Okay. So that's about astronomical telescope or we can say refracting type of telescope. If you want to convert this telescope to a terrestrial telescope, what we have to use, we have to use one more lens. Because here we are getting the image inverted. If you want to get the erect image, for astronomical object it is convenient if you are seeing the erect image. For a, for, sorry, for terrestrial object, for astronomical object that doesn't matter. Whether we are seeing inverted image or erect image that doesn't matter. But for, but for terrestrial objects, we need to see the image in an uh, erect position. So, since here the image is inverted, we need to get the erect image. To get the erect image, we have to place one more lens. Okay, that is called astronomic, uh, sorry, terrestrial telescope. Here what we have seen is astronomical telescope consisting of two lenses. For terrestrial telescope, we have three lenses. Hope that you have understood. Thank you.